Nathan Bomber Brown of Big 12. Mafia, there is football. We have been, we've talked a lot of expansion. We've talked a lot of realignment and how the Big 12 is going to move forward. But now, finally, we are in football month. We're like yep. three weeks away from actually seeing it on the gridiron. I got my copy of Pick 6 Previews, Big 12 <laughs> predictions here about where they will rank, saying last season BYU was the second worst team in the Big 12 conference. Oh, and hopefully geez. this year they can, they graded the second worst team. Hopefully yeah. this year things change a bit. For you, let's start with number five. Who's the fifth best team? in the big 12 in 2024? Uh, I actually have three schools that could be the fifth best team. Mm. <laughs> I, Iowa state, West Virginia, and, and uh, uh, Kansas. I yeah. have is five. Um, and the reason I have them all as five is frankly, because they're all pretty balanced teams. Kansas could, could threaten for the whole thing. If they stay yeah. healthy, the, they could compete. Uh, West Virginia is they're tough. They, they've yeah. been through the grind. And if, and if, uh, green can turn it around or at least play, yeah. play in the top five in quarterbacks. That's that school could fly. And then Iowa state is tough as nails. I think they're ready to go too. So the big 12 is like this though, right? You and I both know this. There's so many that can compete at the top end of the conference. Yeah. Look at Sama at Iowa state. Who's a huge offensive weapon. Daniels at Kansas with Neil in the backfield is going to be uh, again, offensive weapons. And, Garrett Green with C.D. Donaldson and Jaheim White behind him. Those are three really good offenses with names that most people now around the Big 12 especially know. And I like them all at five. So the way that I see it and kind of the way that Brett Ciencia of, of, of Pick 6 Previews puts it is, yes, there's that range of Iowa State, Kansas, West Virginia, even Texas Tech can be considered in that in, in almost the six to ten range. Who exactly. who are guys that five to ten that'll be sitting right there? Let's go to number four though. Who do you have at number four here? I want to make sure I check my list because we're gonna cover it tomorrow night. I have Arizona at number four. And Fafita's great, but they lost yeah. their coach, right? Uh, he's a fantastic quarterback. Can he he carry the whole team? I'm I'm is questionable about their defense. Um, and they have some tough they have a tough schedule this year. So Arizona I have at four. The way the Arizona roster graded according to Pick Six Previews, which is one of the highest rated magazines in all of the country, is number four. You've nailed it right on top wow. of a Heisman voter. They've got to get you hooked up with their committee <laughs> over there. Um, Fafita being there with T-Mac, a wide receiver as well. Talk about offensive weapons. Those two guys will be electric. And as I bring that up, Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders are on the same team. And right. maybe two of the most dangerous players in the country bar none. Shadur Sanders could end up being the best quarterback. Travis Hunter could end up being the best all-around player. I don't think they have the pieces around them to make that team a competitor at the top of the big 12. However, I do think Arizona has enough continuity to compete. Yeah. I, I mean, I look, they played well in the pack 12 last year and I think that they're Surprisingly so, by the way, really yeah. good. Well, it was a surprise. Yeah. Fafita was a surprise. There's no question about it. You know, he got some teams sleeping at, at times, but defenses adjust. He's now been on tape for an entire year. I, I think it's going to be the big 12s much tougher than anybody yeah. gives it credit for. Yeah, could be a sophomore slump on the way for Fafita, but he's an awesome, awesome athlete. I hope and not, because I think he's fun to watch. Great, great. All right, number three, Nathan. Uh, let's see, I have Oklahoma State, and and all I got to say is uh, Ollie Gordon. I love Ollie, Ollie Gordon. Gordon. He beat BYU all by himself. They were down 23 points or something and ran all over my Cougars. So that I, that's who I have at, at number three. Number three for Oklahoma State for you. Uh, they are rated the number 21 team in the country, according to Pick 6 Previews after last season. I mean, the loss to South Alabama, the loss to UCF. You know, it's yeah. kind of the the Mike Gundy. The, I, I go back to Iowa State game 12 years ago, and like there's always that one that he trips up. He has Oklahoma State at number three in the Big 12 preseason. Wow. So you've landed the plane okay. once again. Um, Ollie Gordon back there. I, I don't know. The, only, the, the reservation for me is... Can Alan Bowman become a catalyst that drives a top tier offense? Ollie Gordon obviously can. Can Alan Bowman do it? Uh, the offensive line did not grade very well last season as well. So if they've they've got to prove for the Oklahoma State Cowboys to finish top three, who's your number two? I've gone back and forth. I've changed oh, it about no. seven times in two. I weeks. mean, I know there are two very so, obvious teams left yeah, we haven't hit. Yeah. Utah and Kansas State, right? They're, they both have a puncher's chance. Um, on my list currently this second, I might change it after the show. I have Utah number two, and that's because they've got some players that are absolutely fantastic that have a huge 
injury history, right? Cam, if he goes through the season, he might challenge for the Heisman at the end of the year. Yeah. I don't see it. I've watched him go down twice with similar injuries both times, and he cannot. He's like Kenny Stabler. He yep. can't keep his head out of the action. And I, in doing that, he, he's going to put himself – unless he pl- reserves, unless Kyle Whittingham can say, hey, look – play behind your line a little bit more instead of being out in front of them. And then you won't get hurt. So I've got Utah number two. And I I was going to say, just listen to to some of these players. They got returning. They got Micah Pittman tight end landing King. They have Brant Keithy, Micah Bernard, Jalen Glover. um, And it just continues. (laughs) Cameron Calhoun's a new receiver. I know they got a receiver from USC. So they're going to be loaded. Utah is really, really good. And I will say this, if Utah doesn't win either the big 12 or a playoff game this year, um, I think it's the, probably the big, big, biggest failure uh, under Kyle Whittingham. He's got a team that honestly should, should be top four in the country and should win a playoff game this year. Very good chance that Utah could be a, a, a non-champion bid to the an at-large I bid. See, to college I would see that, yes. Um, yeah. And there may be a point where you get to the end of the season, Utah's 11-1, and one, and you're almost wanting them to lose that Big 12 championship. So a 10-2 and two yeah, or 9-3 Kansas That's State. right. Yep. Yep, yep. Yep. So Utah, according to pick six previews last year, I find this funny, Nathan, and you as the BYU guy. Nice hat, by the way. Uh, last <laughs> season, it, scoring offense, 100th in the nation. Yeah, points yeah. per play, 97th. Total offense, 94th. And yards per play, 103rd. And the rebuttal you would get from Utah fans was they had a catastrophic all-time terrible injury season, and they're exactly right. I've never seen so many guys go down that you go, you look around the room and say, we got to throw the season out the window. We can't, we can't indict Kyle Whittingham in Utah based on what happened last season. They still won eight games. See, I think that's BS. It's total crap, right? That, that, that's Utah PR as far as I'm concerned. Every team deals with injuries. Every team recruits for backups going two and three deep. Every team is hit with these catastrophic injuries. Utah, that is all PR. It, it, they have to go out and win some games. They've won a Pac-12 back-to-back a, a conference that was down. Yeah. U- USC was down. UCLA certainly was down. Oregon was the only one that could win consistently, and they would lose some oddball game every year. They couldn't win yep. get to the playoffs. Look, Pac-12, in my opinion, they had all the flash in, in the pan. They had nothing on the field. Utah won a conference that it was down. They were in a conference in a historically down period of 12 years. So wipe it off the, the, the screen, right? Th- those, those Rose Bowl losses don't count for anything right now. And just look forward. And the Big 12 is the, the toughest place to road, road win in the country. They traveled to UCF. And yeah. uh, for some reason, they gave them the easiest uh, schedule in the conference. So th- – if they just play football and stay healthy, they will be a 10 and 2, 11 and 1 team. No doubt about it. But if they don't, it's not because they had catastrophic injuries. It's because they still didn't fill these, these roles they need to to be a top tier playing school. That's all I'm saying. I love that uh, Bleacher Report has announced the entire Utah offense as their bounce back player of the year in 2024, <laughs> because that's just how bad things are. You're right. I mean, there was, there is the excuse of, um, and I, you hear it out of a lot of new big 12 teams and you heard it out of some BYU fans. Hey, we're adjusting or get, we're, we're adjusting. No, right. we don't have to, there's not, there's not a, Oh, Hey, yeah, we're going to give you guys a couple years to settle. No, in. no. go win. <laughs> yeah. go, despite the circumstances, go in. You have Kansas state at number one, what sets them apart from everybody else and makes them your conference champion preseason? Avery Johnson, DJ Giddens, Dylan yeah. Edwards, um, and their coach is really good. I love I love Chris Kleiman. I, I remember vividly during COVID, Baylor goes two and seven. Uh, their only wins being a dilapidated Kansas Leipold early years, and uh, they they beat Kansas State that year. And everybody thought kind of after that game. Baylor sucked so bad that Chris Kleiman might lose his job. There were murmurs that he wasn't a good fit at Kansas State and now has mowing through the Big 12 Conference. And Last season didn't meet expectations, but that right. evens you out a bit going into this year, gives you a chip on your shoulder. I like Kansas State a lot. Uh, so, Nathan, go back to your top five for me, starting at five. Yeah, five. So I've got a, a tie, Iowa State, State, West Virginia, Kansas State. Then I have Arizona, then Oklahoma State. Utah and Kansas State. By the way, you didn't tell me, was I on on with all four of those or did I miss the final two? 
Pick six previews at number one, the Utah Utes. Yeah, I thought that's what it would be. And at number two, yeah. the Kansas State Wildcats. Yeah. Uh, they had yep. Utah at one based on return production from 2022 because we have they, no idea how any of those guys played in 2023 because they did. They play. have 21 of 22 returning starters if everybody yeah. plays the, at their position. Yep. That, and that's hard to beat, especially when the, their schedule is powder puff. I would oh, encourage you, if you want to yeah. bet, bet the money line on any, any team Utah plays on the road because yep. Kyle Whittingham's going to have him amped up and he wants to score points. He wants to retire. And if he wins a yep. playoff game, I, I say he's gone. Call it. Yep, they already have the, the man in waiting. I love it. Nathan, thank you so much for joining the show today. As always, yeah. where can folks find more of your work? Uh, at Big 12 Mafia, you've seen there on Twitter. You can also look me up at uh, College Football Mafia on our YouTube channel. So Big 12 Mafia, College Football Mafia, and uh, we have a show tomorrow night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. That is Nathan Brown of Big 12 Mafia, College Football Mafia. This has been and always will be locked on. Come back tomorrow for even more fun. No se grande.